Hey guys, welcome to Driven Daily. I'm uploading this video to, to give you a little bit of information about what I'm driving. I'm driving a bone stock D16Y7 that I bought with 254,000 miles. Since I bought the car, I've um, up to about 333,000. I've been boosted since 294,000 miles. Got a 50 trim turbo, little AutoZone air filter, Skunk Pro Manifold, Precision 550cc injectors, also a six puck sprung clutch. Um, it's bone stock other than that. Uh, Got a two and a half inch exhaust out to a Magnaflow muffler, no resonator, no catalytic converter. I'm also chipped and tuned by Club Industries and got D2 racing springs along with Tokiko Blue Strucks. Other than that, I paid 300 bucks for the car. My wife got me the turbo kit for Valentine's Day, and in this video, I will be demonstrating and uploading a video on how to. Calibrate and install an innovative wideband AFR gauge along with the blocks dual, uh, dual gauge bezel So for one of the first steps you want to run the O2 cable through the firewall driver side preferably according to this guy He's putting the gauge in the pod Get it all nice and lined up. As straight as you want I mean it's your fucking car you tell me Yeah you ain't like I am. That's in, let's go wire. Yeah. Alright. Let's see. What we're going to probably do is I'm going to run the wires down here straight to the ignition source. And then. I don't know if I have an eyelet big enough to ground it here, but we're going to find somewhere running through here ground it. I may have a self-tapping screw where we can ground it in through here. Scratch up the surface and ground it. And then we'll just leave the other ones in case we ever want a data log. <laughs> yeah, should be simple to install. So, so a 12 volt power source, a good ground. Yeah. What we'll do is we'll ground it to the, the 12 volt so it's always on with the ignition. And then uh, we'll just tap in the negative into the body. All right, so what did you decide to do? Instead of tapping into the actual key solenoid up here and trying to get that solder cold en or hot enough, we're going to actually tap into the wire down here that goes into the fuse box. That way there. We don't have to run the risk of a cold solder and it ever coming through. So what you do is you find your on position wire and you literally you're gonna take some take some loom off and typically I use wire strippers but I wire for a living so it's not too hard to do it this way for me. But generally if you don't familiar with your own strength or wires or anything like that, I highly suggest you use wire strippers. It's much more easier. We can do it to get away with a lighter. Or melt the, uh, melt the plastic. <laughs> you can actually pull out the correct tool. Well, I'm going to cut back another little portion of it to fit. No. cutting the loom make sure you don't actually cut the wire because if you cut the wire and they cross you could burn your car down would it be a pretty fire oh speaking of which this is for demonstration purposes only we are not responsible if you light your car on fire or your house or yourself <laughs> you know it's gonna be heading to right <laughs> All right, now that we're exposed enough, take your actual wire strippers. These things are awesome. Fit them in the wire and simply, oh. Spread them like butter. And there it is, it's tapped. Now there's more than one way to skin the cat. What you can do is you can either uh, 
you can either twist it around, put a bead of solder on it, make sure you have a good contact. If you don't have a soldering iron, just make sure you twist the power source really, really well. Twist it around there. Make sure you e-tape it up. You don't want your ignition wires floating around, touching your steering column or whatever else. Um, or, if you're thorough, you can cut it, solder it all together, and then heat shrink it. Your choice. But for practicality purposes tonight, it's cold. And I don't feel like dragging my soldering iron stuff out here. We're literally going to take our strippers again. I'm going to strip back a little bit more wire. That way there we have a nice solid connection. Go up under here. Twist it together first. Up under here. Literally just butt them together. Wrap them really, really well. In part two, when I go in and install the wide band and the narrow band wires to the ECU for data logging, we'll come back and put a dab of solder on that to make sure that it's nice and permanently installed. But for tonight's video, I'm just going to e-tape it up. If I can find it. Show them where the ground is. We took a eyelet terminal right there, grounded it. Um, I know a lot of you guys actually like to just coil the wire around and ground it that way, but I would highly suggest probably not doing it that way because you're not going to get the greatest connection. And if you start to data log and anything like that, you're going to get a lot of noise. So try to ground it as good as possible. Same with the ignition wires. So there, we're all done with that. What we're gonna do is, notice I didn't break the tab. We're gonna stick it back up there so that it's nice and tight. And these are your data logging wires. If I remember correctly, brown is wide band and yellow is narrow band. Um, double check, but I'm pretty sure that's what they are. Unless you're data logging, you can just stick those up to the side. Um, for right now, we're not data logging, so we're just gonna tuck them up you can either e-tape them, tuck them away from anything, or whatever. Whatever works. And it works. All I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this bracketry. There's a little rubber insert that's on the firewall. I'm going to run it through the insert and into the back of the dash. Oh uh, yes, I've under the hood over there. Alright, after the install is all done, what you're going to want to do... <laughs> Sold an ECU already. <laughs> Club Industries. <laughs> First thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to calibrate your O2. First, you got to find the car keys. And what you're going to do is you're going to turn your ignition on. Cut it off because it's the error code. And then you're gonna plug up your Y band. Where's the plug? Before you put it into the exhaust. And for daily drivers, they recommend that you recalibrate every three months. Come over here. Heater is heating up the O2 to the operating temperature. <laughs> you to be plugged up or still... It's already plugged up.
and it's calibrated 22.4 now you can proceed with putting it back into the or putting it into the exhaust another thing a lot of people forget to do is they don't put anti-seize on these things but usually innovate a boss comes with anti-seize inside well, or it's it already comes on pre anti-seize what is still there, there you go but it's always good to add a dab more but try not to get it anywhere up through the center keep it directly on the threads and you should be good to go but anytime you're using exhaust bolts or anything of that nature try to keep NICs on it and you won't have seized bolts or cross threaded or anything of that nature so but let's plug it up check it out and we should be good to go Hold on. You ready? Yeah. all right as you can see we're gonna install it now if you keep AC and stuff like that it's gonna be really really tight quarters um, generally they're about seven eighths is the socket size for them but if you notice you get this wire right here so you really can't do it a lot of people try the wrench method but as you can see we're really really tight quarters we're not fitting a wrench in there um, so what you want to do where is it? you want to grab a socket similar to such and what it'll do is it'll essentially slip over the wire and allow you to tighten it one of the main things is when you're putting this on you don't want to put it on and keep tightening it full turns because what you'll do is you'll end up fraying this and it'll pretty much uh, shorten the, the lifespan of it so what we're going to do is we're going to put it on the wire follow the wire all the way down and if you see that little spring piece right there you want to be careful of that piece because a lot of times what you can do is as you're turning it, you can fray that piece and then your wires touch and you're pretty much not going to get an accurate reading. So, let's see here. There we go. And as you can see, there. Now we're on. Now, with a concoction of different extensions and swivels and whatever else we may need, we will get it on there. Now we torque. That should be tight enough right there. Let's set this over here. What you want to do is you definitely want to make sure that you get the O2 away from the exhaust housing as far as possible so that way there you don't burn anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to route it around through here there we can plug it up away from everything you need to use zip ties if you don't want to use zip ties you can use an abundance of different things you make rubber grommets you can buy at Lowe's mainly keep it away from the belts keep it away from the uh, you got your wastegate pipe anything that'll burn it keep it away keep it away from your fan shroud and all that good stuff and now you should be able to turn it on and it should read all right so here we go Excuse the finger, it's broke. Gotta heat up. Usually on the first startup, it takes a while to heat up, but after your sensor heats up, it should read correctly. And there, there you have it. Reading about 15 on a warm start. Well, semi-warm start. And uh, that's your install right there. If you guys have any questions? Leave them in the comments below. Thanks.